back to my youtube channel if this is your first time here my name is Oyin and thank you so much for tuning in today in today's video i'm going to be talking about how to find accommodation if you're a student in the uk and you know for whatever reason you're coming to the uk this video is going to help you i've been getting a lot of questions about accommodation on instagram and i feel like you know if this video is just about you like it's time i tell you guys the proper way to find your accommodation right and if i had seen this video before i came to the uk i'll tell you that this is not where i'll be today <laughs> i won't be living where i'm living right now so um yeah i'm helping somebody out there so make sure you stick to the end and i really hope you learn so much from this video and get one or two if this is your first time on this channel please do subscribe and also drop a comment share this video like this video do everything to support me on this channel and you know i really really appreciate you guys and yeah let's just get into it okay first of all i want to let you know that everything i mentioned here today like the types of accommodation all of that i'm going to link everything in the description box so make sure you check it out and yeah okay the first accommodation i'm going to talk about are student halls which is like the university campus so you can find this type of accommodation from your university when you get your admission they usually send like a newsletter to talk about your living campus and accommodation of that and then it will give you like a direct link to where the campus is and the website where you can book so this campus accommodation gets filled up very very fast because of the newbies that are coming in and for example my university university of southford we have john lester which is for like postgraduate students and pill park which is for undergraduates pill park gets booked very very fast because that's like the finest um building or accommodation in like the whole campus okay so for me i booked my accommodation like six months before because i got my admission very very early and i already heard like it goes by very very fast so my dad actually wanted me to stay on campus like, security all of that so um like, okay you know what stay here for like six months and then you can leave at least when you're already familiar with the area i thought like, okay that's fine so i booked my accommodation and yeah so you need to check your university even if you don't get like your newsletter you need to check um you need to send them a message and they will let you know the accommodations that are available from the school okay so for example and i'm sure these are other universities are they have like different range of accommodation available so for mine they start from like bronze to diamond so basically bronze is like a single room and it's kind of small and diamond room is like you know the biggest according to the campus like it's like two bedroom not two bedroom sorry double room not two double bed <laughs> it's like a double bed yeah so it's spacious and it's big that's actually where i'm staying because of like the space and you know my content so yeah um for john lester it usually starts from 104 pounds to 130 pounds yeah and per week so um yeah it has actually increased because when i was here it was 125 pounds for diamond row but now it's 130. so you can check their website which i'm going to link below and if it's for the undergraduates which is more expensive it starts from 134 pounds to 158 pounds per week so the good thing about this campus is that you can you know you are you are paying everything at once right if you are staying outside you need to pay water bills all those things like this one everything is in one so that's the only good thing about staying on campus <laughs> another good thing is that um the campus is very very close to the school so like a walking distance or a bus away and yeah if you need to communicate from your school to your accommodation is not so far and also this type of accommodation you share like your bedroom for example my place share bedroom and toilets with other flatmates right so you have like your own rooms but you're sharing bedroom and toilet so the higher you go like the higher you go from the low like from the bronze the lower the number of people you share bedroom and toilet with so if you're staying like a diamond room you only share with one person right and if you're staying like bronze you share to about four to five people and kitchen too so yeah the next accommodation i'm going to talk about are the private student accommodation so basically they are owned by private people and they also have agents in which you go through 
to um, get into the accommodation. So you need to um, reach out to them on check their website and then you reach out to them through their chat box or emails phone numbers, you call them and they will get back to you as soon as possible. For example, in Manchester, we have IQ City Accommodation, we have X1 City Accommodation, we have um, True. So um, yeah, you can check them out and they're also quite pricey, but if you want to stay alone, it's very easy for you to see a studio apartment there and you know, you have your own kitchen, your own bedroom and everything. If not, some of them you have your own room with everything but you only have to share kitchen yeah or sometimes you need to share both kitchen and toilet but yeah that's basically it then we have rooms and our share so basically if you are coming as a group with your friends and then you need to stay together you can basically book a house and all of you stay together so the next is house and room share so for example if you're coming with your friends and like two or three people and you want to stay together so you can basically just um, get a house and all of you stay together and pay the rent together and these places are actually cheaper because you're getting a whole house for you guys so for house share I'm going to tell you um, where you can find them in a bit so the next one is temporary accommodation so for example if you want to move to the UK and you know, you're not really feeling the places you're seeing or you don't trust them or you just don't trust the pictures or the videos you're not just satisfied then you can get yourself a temporary accommodation and you can get this through booking.com Airbnb and this you can just get for like a month and this is just to help you familiarize yourself around and you can go and look for your accommodation by yourself when you get to the UK. So basically, even student accommodation, they offer this because I know a friend of mine, she's not really my friend, but like a mutual friend that um, stayed in, like she stayed on campus for just a month, which is, is actually quite pricey. So she stayed for a month and then she used that period to, you know, get settled and also find a place that she would like to live. So you could also find out from your accommodation if that from your campus if that's available and yeah different types of rooms right we have the single room and this is just a bed with your table chairs wardrobe and all of that and then double room you have a bed that is times two of the single bed and everything together and then you have in suits so basically in suits is you have your own bedroom and toilet inside your bedroom yeah and then we have a studio apartment so you're just living by yourself with your kitchen and enjoying yourself alone okay so yeah um there are also private accommodations which are not basically like specifically for students but anybody can stay there and in that accommodation you can get like a two bedroom or three bedroom and you can share with your friends even if you don't have a friend you can get someone from maybe your whatsapp group that is coming to the uk to study or you can also get them online and just make sure you trust the person and yeah both all of you can or both of you can live together and you split the bills which is actually cheaper right so um you have like your own in suit your own bedroom toilet everything you're just sharing kitchen with your um with the other person right so this accommodation are quite cheap because let's say um um you are paying about 115 in a month yeah so basically you should know that you are going to be paying your bills separately if you are not staying in student accommodation you need to be paying your bills so if you had um your wi-fi if you had electricity if you had water basically everything is going to be up to like let's just say um, 130 140 right but if you are splitting it with someone it's cheaper yeah so for example we have x1 media city um, we have the heart we have um, light box green rooms basically there are so many beautiful accommodations in media city you just need to check and they're also not far from school because they're free bus from that area to school so moving on where to check for all these accommodations so basically you can check spare room um, you just need to input your um, location you need to get the postcode of your school and then input it with your location and basically you're going to get a lot of options right there are also people that are even selling their rooms 
on the spare room right and you could reach out to them if you see available for viewing if you're not in the uk you could always do online viewing or if you have someone here the person can help you to go and check the place but yeah you could also see accommodations on facebook there are a lot of students or people selling their accommodation on facebook because they don't like them anymore and they want to um sell the place yeah so you just need to do your research and make sure you don't fall for any scam activities yeah we have um the facebook marketplace and there are so many um groups on facebook if you check around your area that um put up accommodations for sale so basically you could check there okay, another place you can check is um right moves they have a lot of accommodations there up for sale you just need to register and then you can put your location in same as earlier and get where you want to stay so um we also have my student halls and we have um, Amber students, we have Unite students. Basically, all these websites you can get accommodation and you know, check them out. It's still talking about where to search. You can also check Manchester student homes, you can also check student living, and you see lots of accommodation. Now, I'm going to talk about deposits, right? So, for your student accommodation, they're going to ask you, Me, I paid 200 deposit when I came which is refundable and you know some accommodation will not ask you for deposits it can be free and then you can just pay in your first rent and if you are staying outside private accommodation they can actually ask you to pay um, five weeks rent deposits and plus your first month so when you are leaving if you don't break anything if everything is good I can to give the money back so now let's talk about payment options so for example on my campus you have like two installments so basically your deposits and then you can pay two times right so a whole year money you need to pay it twice let's say it's 5k in a year you need to pay 3,000 2,000 later on so yeah, if you need to pay monthly or you feel like you cannot pay the whole year at once, then you need a guarantor, right? And um, the guarantor has to be in the UK. Basically, a guarantor is someone that can help you pay your rent if you cannot pay it anymore, if you miss a payment. So that person has to be in the UK. And sometimes you might find it difficult to get a guarantor, especially if you are coming here for the first time and you don't know anybody in the UK. So you can reach out to your school. Of course, you're going to pay. Reach out to your school and they can serve in as your guarantor. So I would advise before you sign anything, <laughs> read it very very well my plan coming here was that i'll stay six months and after six months i will leave but basically i didn't know i signed a contract that i cannot leave until the end of my contract so basically i'm stuck here for a year right so and there's nothing you can do about it if sometimes if you need to leave some accommodation can actually offer you that okay you need to get somebody else and if you are staying on campus it's even harder because you need to get someone that is a student of your university to stay on campus right which you might not even find so basically you have to leave there until you are done so if you feel like you know you don't want to be stuck in a contract you can pay six months first leave there for six months and when it's closed you can actually renew and sometimes you can even change your mind when you get here you don't like it and you might not want to stay so make sure you don't just pay for like a whole year yeah just split it and if you like it you can always renew it we've come to the end of this video and i hope you got one or two um if you have any question at all make sure you drop a comment reach out to me on instagram and i'm here to answer all your questions